Python and drone blocks. In this video, we're going to show you how you can use Python to send code to your Telos. So what I'm going to show you is how to download Python on a PC on a Mac, and I'm then going to show you how you can configure your Chromebook to run Python. Yes, Python on a Chromebook. Now, only certain Chromebooks of a certain age will be compatible, but it's still really cool, and hopefully your Chromebooks are compatible with this method. So let's get into the video. Open up your favorite web browser, and simply go to python.org slash download. That will then tell you download the latest version for Windows or for Mac OS. Now on my Mac, I'm just gonna click download and there you have the icon, it's downloaded. And then I'm gonna click on open and then you have this little pop-up box. Now the pop-up box is basically gonna be asking us a whole bunch of questions. Now this pop-up saying install Python. So we're gonna click on continue and then we're gonna continue again, agree and install and then it's going to want you to authenticate with your password so i'm going to type in my password and click install software now pathing gets installed i'm just going to skip to the end once it's installed click on close and you're done and then you can move to the bin if you don't want to keep the install file now on a pc same thing go to python.org download and then it will say download the latest version for windows click on the installer and then it's going to prompt you with install now. Now, I recommend talking to your IT provider of the school and just getting them to help you install Python on your device if you run into any problems. So we'll click on install now. If you can, click on add Python 3 to the path. Amazing. So let it install. I'll just skip into this. When it's done, we click on close and there we have it. Now, accompanying your Python install, I recommend using Visual Studio Code. So to download that, just go to code.visualstudio.com and install it on your Windows or your Mac just like any other device. This will give you the option of typing out your Python code that you can use to send the Tello. Now, in this video, I'm just going to give you a sample of how the Python works, but we do have lessons inside the curriculum, as you'll see in lesson three, that cover this in great detail. So effectively, all I need to do is I can use Python to import the DroneBlocks module, and I do that by going like this, I just do a quick little, quick little pip install drone blocks Python utils. Now, if you work with Python, you know what this means. If you don't work with Python and this is new, you will learn all about this in the curriculum. Okay, so we have Python. It does all this cool stuff, and it says it's connect, it's installed all this package stuff that lives in this folder. A lot of dependencies that go with our wonderful drone blocks app. So we'll skip all that. Now, when I'm ready to connect to my drone. I simply import the drone a bit of code from a Python library. I then will create a new Tello instance, which is done by going Tello equals drone blocks dot drone block Tello. And then your code is as simple as doing something like this, Tello dot connect. That will then get you connected to the Tello. Then you can do Tello dot get battery, rotate clockwise. And you'll see that every time I run a command like Tello dot get battery, it returns a value. So here you can see my battery life. And if I do it again, the battery life has gone down. And then what's really cool is I can write functions. I can write loops. I can do all the cool Python stuff and send that to my Tello drone. It is so cool. So let us look at flying in a square. So here I have my Tello example. I've created a function in Python called def square mission. So that means that I've got a function that whenever I call this function, my Tello is going to do the following. Tello.takeoff, so it takes off. Then it goes, and I've got time.sleep for one second, so for three seconds, so the drone has some time to get the instructions sent to it. And now I go like this, Tello.move forward 60. We're going to move forward 60 inches. Tello.move right 60. Tello.move backward 60. Tello.move left 60. And then Tello.land. Now, I have peppered this telo.sleep command in between the commands. So we have the time.sleep just so that the Python code knows to just calm down for a couple of seconds before it sends the next bit of code. Otherwise, Python will just go pew, 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 pew. That's basically the noise the code makes as it gets sent to the drone real quickly and the drone might skip a few steps. So by having time.sleep for three seconds, we ensure that the drone is not going to get overwhelmed with instructions from Python. And then basically I just go def uh, square mission to launch the code and behold, we're using Python to fly our drones. Now that is so cool. Now, a lot of teachers have said, Clinton, we have 
Chromebooks, can we do Python? Sort of. If your Chromebook is of a certain age, you can definitely install what we call the Linux development environment. So the first thing you want to do is run all your Chromebook updates. And you do that by going here. You go into your settings. You want to check for your updates. And if you're not up to date, make sure you run your update. So in this case, you can see on my machine, because I've just run my updates, I am up to date. That is so cool. So here's an example. If you didn't update your device, it's going to say, hey, please update your device first. Okay. So you, you, you won't see that screen if you're all updated. Okay. So I'm going to use my Chromebook. So what I want to do is I want to click down here on the bottom left, and then I want to go up to settings. So if you click on settings, on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you'll see advanced. Click on advanced and then scroll a little bit further down to where you can see developers. If you click on developers, you will see it says Linux development environment. If your Chromebook supports this feature, click on turn on. Then you'll be prompted with this, set up Linux development environment. Yay, click on next, give yourself a username, click on next, use the 10 gigs, it's fine. Then Linux will install. How cool is that? Installing Linux on a Chromebook. And then once that's done, you can install Visual Studio Code, you can install Python, and then you can follow along with our curriculum in lesson three on your Chromebooks. So let's just have a quick look at what this Linux environment looks like once it's finished installing. I'm gonna use some video editing magic to skip ahead. Now, as you can see, we have a tiny little terminal. If you've used Linux before, you'd go, hey, cool, that's a Linux terminal. Well, maybe you won't, but who knows? If you've never used Linux before, you might say, what have you done to my Chromebook? Don't worry, this is just a cool way that we can type things to make things happen. Now that the installation's finished, you'll see a little command line. If you type in Python 3, Voila, you have Python on your Chromebook. You can then do some extra things like installing the package manager, and then you can download and install the DroneBlocks library. So then you can use your Chromebook, program your Tello drones using Python. Now what's really cool is if you click down here and open up your Google browser, you can actually go to code.visualstudio.com. And then if you click on that link, you will have the option to download Visual Studio Code. So we're gonna do the DEB, the Debian or Ubuntu distro, it's going to download just like that. We click show in folder. We double click on the install file. It says install app with Linux. It gives you the information. We click on install. Installation in progress. We click OK. And now watch what happens. Once this installation is finished, I'm going to show you something so cool on a Chromebook. So it's 71%. Don't need to. Percent is increasing. It's nearly finished. So now you see this little bar is moving across during the installation and it says installation complete. Now, if you go back to your terminal and type in code, this is so cool. Watch what happens. All of a sudden, the command line comes back to you, but wait, something is happening. Behind the scenes, it is launching Visual Studio Code. That's right, there's Visual Studio Code on a Chromebook. You can right click on the app icon and say pin, and then you can use that icon to run the Linux version of that app every time you want to launch your code. So from here, you can have the full access to all of Visual Studio Code's features. How cool is that? Just think of all the possibilities of your existing Chromebooks can run Visual Studio Code and Python. Amazing. And that takes us to the end of this video. Well done. I know Python can be scary, so hopefully you enjoyed that. This takes us to the end of lesson two. In the next video, I'm going to do a quick summary with what we've learned so you can put your drones down, but grab your classroom device and meet me in the next and final video for lesson two.